Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Today, we will be looking at AMT Ertl's Mark Donahue's 1975 American Motors Matador by AMT Ertl. Now this model car kit is out of my own personal collection. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. And once again, race fans, we head all the way back down to the NASCAR track for 1975, where we get to see this amazing Mark Donahue 1975 American Motors Matador Sports Coupe. Now this model car came out from AMT Ertl in 1999. However, four short years before that, this model kit also came out as Bobby Allison's 1975 Matador Sport Coupe. Both Bobby Allison and Mark Donahue brought the AMC Matadors to great success on the NASCAR racetrack. Roger Penske built Matadors won three NASCAR Winston Cup races in 1975, the top season for factory-backed AMC stalkers. As we turn our box lid up on the side, you can of course see this nice detailed photograph of the rear of the car, featuring all the decals on it. This is a skill level 2 kit, requires paint and glue for ages 10 and up. On this side of the box, you can clearly see the NASCAR style wheels. They do have the Goodyear lettering reversed on here for some reason. There's our engine bay with all the braces and then the side profile of our car down here. So how did AMT capture this great model car? Well, let's open up the lid and see what's inside. So by removing the top, we can see we've got a nice pair of instructions here as well as a decal sheet which we'll look at at the end of the video. You get the excellent AMC car body all set up for racing as well as an interior inside there. There's the chassis pan. We've got a hood. We also have our instrument panels or engine components. The panel just ran away on me. There it is. We've got a chrome part tree and then we've got our glass in this bag as well as all the rest of our gray components. And now we can take a look at our amazing instruction sheet. And it, to start with, we've got a very nice illustration of the Mark Donahue car, number 16. As we open up our instruction sheet, we do have these nice painting instructions for the Coca-Cola car, which of course was driven by Bobby Allison and Mark Donahue, two different cars. They've got flat black, gloss white, silver, aluminum, red, medium gray, gloss black, and blue. The red, white, and blue were the, of course, American Motors color schemes. We also have the recommended tools, which are clippers, files, tweezers, and sandpaper. Panel A shows our excellent NASCAR 364 cubic inch AMC motor with a single four barrel carburetor. This motor put out 514 horsepower. So as you can see, we have a right and left hand side engine block. We have our cylinder heads and our intake manifold as well as the oil pan underneath and our front timing chain cover and in the back we have a separate transmission that goes together both right and left hand side. Panel 1B shows our valve covers being glued into place as well as our belts and pulleys and then we've got an alternator on one side and a power steering pump on the other as well as our exhaust manifolds. Panel C continues with our four barrel racing carburetor being glued onto the manifold as well as our oil filler tube and coil, the distributor dropping in place. We have our fan with the clutch on it and our special racing starter. Once we finished assembling our race motor, we're off to the races with our interior. And here we have a nice floor pan, which is very flat and race friendly, as well as our flat door panels gluing in place and the back panel for where our seat used to be on the factory model. Then we've got oil coolers dropping in place, as well as fire extinguishers. Here we have our bucket seat for racing with these nice little pillars underneath. Then we have our gear stick lever and going in place as well. There is an additional panel and we have our racing dashboard going in place. There are the pedals mounted in underneath the dashboard. And then we have our racing steering wheel and straight up column, which will go in and glue into the interior right in these spots here. 
The second half of our interior build shows our roll cage assembly going together and then being installed in the interior compartment. Now, these rear bars will glue into these little brackets off the back and everything else will drop into place and look great. Step three is a build of our chassis and there is a little simplification up front here where we can see these wheel blocks being glued into place on the front A member, but that's okay. Then we have a two-piece rear differential with the springs and shock absorbers as well as this racing stabilizer which glues across the back. There is a brace right here as well as our drive shaft going up into the engine once we mount it in place. And then we have these nice exhaust dumps coming out the side of the car. Panel 4 shows our body going together with all the little details. Now there was one thing of interest. This little side window that glues in here it's actually a filler for what would be the uh, vinyl roof car. However, in 1975, they raced with this in place, but for 1974, they left this out and used the full size rear window. So you could actually build the 1974 versions of these cars out of the 75 kit just by leaving this piece off. Moving along, we also have our gas filler caps going in place, our glass front and back, we have the little brace across the front where we mount our bumper and our little splash pan here. Our airfoil, actually. There's our grill with the blanked out headlights for racing. And then we have our firewall gluing into our interior, which of course will all pop up back into that body. Panel 5 is a continuation of our body components, where we do have the chrome plated spoiler dropping into the three holes in the back, which I do believe you have to drill those through ahead of time. Then we've got our rear panel gluing into place again. The taillights were blanked out for NASCAR racing, of course. Then we've got our bumper going in place and these little fillers that go in behind the bumper just to give the car more streamlined effect in the racing circle. This side panel here shows our NASCAR wheels being glued together and you get the wheel, the tire and the wheel back all go into place. This car has slicks in all four corners. Now that our tires are assembled, it is time to finish off the race ready chassis by putting the wheels in place into the axle holes. And then we have these dual mounted shocks up front and all the caging for underneath the hood, which will glue onto our radiator support with our radiator. Panel six shows our final assembly for the model kit with of course the body going onto the chassis. The, you then attach the radiator hose from the engine to the front of the radiator. Then the battery goes into the trunk area. That was to give a little more uh, weight distribution into the car. Then our air cleaner will drop into place with the back port of it gluing up against the firewall. And of course the body drops into place. And once all that is done, you can hide your engine bay by using the hood. Last but not least is our decal application. And these are very nice as we'll see at the end of the video. But as you can see, the location here is where the Enjoy Coca-Cola sign goes. Then we've got Matador on the back, Goodyear, Champion Spark Plugs, and the Coca-Cola logo here, as well as Mark's Donahue's number 16. And over here we have AMC Matador with the American Motors logo, the Enjoy Coca-Cola decal, Mark Donahue's number 16, and it's the real thing Coke. Now. One thing about this car is you're going to have to paint this body before you assemble it all because you need to mask off in three spots. What I did was I painted the car white and then I used the masking tape along here to paint the front fenders with blue and red into the back and then peeled off the masking tape, which ended up making the car look like this. Now this, of course, is the Bobby Allison version of the car from 1995, and I got this one and started to work on it before the one we're gonna see today. And as you can see, I did have some problems with this. I sanded the paint because it was orange peeled and it did cut through. So I'm gonna have to try to redo this sometime in the future. But anyway, yeah, you can see how I masked this off. I did have trouble with the paint on the hood and I had to strip it, of course which is quite unfortunate because I was pretty much on the right track, but I did this around 1994, so you can imagine how old this model kit is now. So it does need a definite redo. Here we have the body for the Matador Sport Coupe. And now as you can see, we've got the full out extended window, which if I painted this up again, like I did the other car, I could use this as the 1974 version of the kit. 
there you can see that better that way it does have the blanked out door handles here which would be a plate of tin or something put across there just to lighten up the car for nascar racing underneath it's quite nice as you can see there's no real major sinks or mold marks you do have to drill out the three holes after all to put your spoiler into the back on the trunk lid because this was also meant to be the stock version of the kit which actually I do have one, you'll see it later on in this channel as the months go by. Now I did sand this down a little bit here just to smooth it out, but uh, as you can see it is quite a basic body shell, but again that's the way they race them in the real NASCAR. Our next plastic part is the bug-eyed, frog-eyed style hood from our Matador, with of course the headlight bulges up here, looking very much like a frog. If you look underneath, you can see the hood matting, fireproof matting underneath, which is quite nice. There are some sink marks underneath here in the four corners, but they're not very deep, so they're easy to clean up. So again, very nice looking hood, and it does fit well, as we saw on the painted Bobby Ellison version. Next up, we have our race-ready Matador interior, and there is one really nice thing about this, which I'll show you in a second here. There is a carpet on the floor, and we do have the correct floor pedals inside, as well as this nice package shelf in the back. But remember in some of the earlier videos, I said one thing that drives me crazy is when there's mold marks in the carpet and you have to go down and try to get them? Well, check this out. This is where they actually did it right. They've got the mold marks on the bottom of this pan, where you're not going to see them when you look at it from the car. The next component we have is our race-ready NASCAR chassis, which of course has the fuel cell in the back and all this nice detail and ribbing in underneath. The uh, front lower A arms and cross brace are all molded as one piece in here, which again is a little simplified. It could be better, but overall it's not bad considering this kit came out in the 70s. One thing that is nice again, just like the interior, is AMT was really on the ball with where they put the sink marks, because there's none on this side, but if you turn it over, again, where you're not going to see from a car window or whatever, there's the little mold marks underneath, so they're easy just to sand the tops down to get this nice and smooth so that your interior will fit in there very nicely. Now there are a lot of parts that make up this model car, as you can see with the rest of these parts trees. We do have one, two, three, for five sprues and I guess I was working on this a little bit because there's a lot of loose parts in here which I know I've cut off and cleaned up so as you can see there is quite a lot one thing that is cool though is that they actually give you the stock rear bumper and panel here because you can see the tail lights are molded in place or well, quite deep and then here we have a license plate frame whereas if you look at the one down here you can see that the taillights have been blanked off and there is no license plate shroud. So this is the actual racing one down here. And this is left over from when the kit was actually introduced as a stock car. Now let's take a look at these components a little more closely. And as you can see, these are the inner panels that are all smoothed off from the factory edition of the car. There is a lot of nice ribbing in here as well as rivets up along the sides, which would be prototypical to the real NASCAR. And then here's our streamlined package shelf and back for our car. There are some little spots where you mount those little bars in the back from the roll cage. And again, AMT has put all the mold marks on the back, which makes this really excellent, especially considering the vintage of this kit. Our next parts tree includes a differential battery and part of the suspension. And as you can see again, the two-piece differential is quite nicely detailed. The battery looks a little tiny, but, uh, well, whatever. Then we've got those blocks for the front suspension, as well as the springs and the shock absorbers. There's a the cross brace and our differential, as well as the upper radiator hose. So again, very nice work by AMT. Next up, we have our roll cage and our front pulleys for racing, gas filler cap, the shock absorbers, the wheel backs, and all the other goodies, exhaust manifolds as well. So let's just take a look again at these. Now I notice the engine parts are very simplistic in this kit. Maybe they could have been made better, but then again, I mean, it is simple and it does make a good representation of the actual NASCARs. There's the uh, top of the gas cap. As you can see, that would be the part that you uh, unscrew and it goes click, click. <laughs> again, it's a racing gap, 
gas cap, pardon me. So it is quite a bit different from your regular one, but again, all designed for NASCAR. Here's the components for our 394 cubic inch AMC NASCAR motor. And there is a little faux pas I see because the transmission is not an automatic as was suggested with the pedals in the interior here, but it is in fact a standard. And that's kind of one thing that bugs me a little bit, but I do know that that interior pan is also for the stock version of the AMC. So when I get to review that one, keep this video in mind and we'll see if it actually has a standard transmission in the other model or if it's automatic. However, there's our engine blocks going together and much like the 74 Plymouth, there are no frost plugs in the engine. But then again, this is the NASCAR version of the motor, so maybe it's a bit different. I'm not 100% sure. But this one is not the typical AMC metallic blue. It's calling for aluminum, so this could be, again, a special race motor. Have to look into that history on the thing. Anyway, there's all our carburetor and other details, the intake manifold. My fan actually has broken a blade off here on the parts tree. Let's see if I just bring it up you can see it's cracked off hopefully I can get that to glue back together somehow although it is on a very precarious little stub there's our braces for our seats and uh, all the parts are really done nicely I mean the transmission does have some good detail on it it's not just smooth like the block but again very nicely done very simplistic but it will look good once it's all together Here's the remainder of our gray plastic components. Ah, and I do notice there is a little bit of a change here. Okay, we'll get that to that in a second. But here you can see the back of our roll cage. There's one of the side window filler panels. Then we've got our slicked out back end and our grill with the headlights covered, just like in the real race cars. Then our front clip and our firewall and our radiator and radiator support. This has got the extended radiator for extra cooling around the race circuit. Then we've got our steering wheel with the grips on the back and our uh, bucket seat here with the four point harness in it and our front shock absorbers and the rear stabilizer as well as our wheel back. Now, let's just take a look at some of the components on here. And as you can see, they've got the rivets in around that window opening which is very nice actually. And uh, our roll cage looks good too. Of course, we clip the window out there and there, but again, it does look right. Now, one thing, remember I said that the interior had the uh, automatic pedals in it? Well, here's the race one, and our dashboard actually has the gas pedal and the clutch and the brake as well and then all the gauges and it is flat here which is typical to nascar because again they want to reduce all the rate get rid of the radio and all the rest for lightness of the car and then look at our bucket seat here we've got the nice seat belts right inside again very nice back panel smooth prototypical looks excellent and easy to install on the car front end Again, look at the nice grill work in there. Very well detailed. Steering wheel has the right grip onto it. And then the safety in the center, just uh, nice and padded. So that if the driver gets into a crash or something, it won't get hurt by the steering wheel. There's that front panel, nice and smooth. All the mold marks are into the back, which is very nice. Detail on the firewall, a little bit light, but you know, all the right parts in the right places. Again, mold marks on the back where you don't see them. And then our radiator support. Uh, now there are some on the radiator, but again, keep in mind that they've got it right this time. This will go, I do believe this way where you don't really see it because of the fan and everything covering those holes. There's our rear stabilizer bar, sort of like a lightning bolt. The wheel back, I don't know. <laughs> Can you say about that? And then there's our springs here which were adjustable for NASCAR racing on different tracks and circuits, which again is quite nice. So looking at these parts, I will say that the detail on them is excellent. Now, as we look over our parts trees, we start to see that there are some stock features in this model car, which of course are sort of snuck in because it was a universal parts tree back in the day. Here we have our stock 1975 AMC Matador grill with of course our turn signal and parking lights in here as well as the chrome headlights in place 
which is quite a departure from the race version as you can see here. So I'll just bring up the two just like that and compare them. So yeah, you can see quite a bit of a difference between the factory and the race. But again, the chrome on this model car is quite nice. There are some really nice details like the racing wheels here. And then I've also found that we've got our racing intake manifold right here, the chrome one. You can see it's more of a high rise compared to the stock version, which again is quite nice. Chrome air cleaner on there. Lots of nice chrome components. Again, it looks sort of like somebody scratched this or got a finger on it. <laughs> but anyway, again, nice work for this model kit and good job from AMT. Next up, we have our two pieces of glass, which of course include the front windshield and the rear window. Our tires for this kit consist of Goodyear Blue Streak Stock Car Specials, which of course are these tires here. These are four corner drag slicks, which are quite nice, but uh, they do include a lot of flash, a webbing on the back, and flash up the center of the tread. Now, of course, you'll have to cut this out with your hobby knife, and of course this side, but you can use your wheel spinning tool to put this in there and put this in your drill, spin it with a bit of sandpaper on here and you'll be able to remove that ridge. And these tires will look accurate to the NASCAR circuit. We also get these nice metal axles here just to hold our wheels onto the car. Here we have the number 16 Mark Donahue decals for our car. And as you can see, there's these number 16s. You get this nice Enjoy Coca-Cola decal, which has been around since the 70s, if you uh, think about it. There's our Champion spark plugs, as well as the Coke. We've got our AMC Matadors, which go on the fenders here. There's the red, white, and blue. These ones go on the rear quarter panels. This is on the trunk. These are on the sides. And then we've got this as well. Now, I want to give you guys a dual decal delight. In case you come across the 1995 edition of this car, the Bobby Allison car, you will also note that you do get the Mark Donahue numbers on the decal sheet for that kit. And I thought I'd show you this since I do have both cars, as you saw before. The AMC Matadors for our hood. The Enjoy Coca-Cola decal, again, for our hood. Now here we've got Champion. We've got the Muzzler by Sears, Edelbrock and Holly on the sides instead of just Coca-Cola and Champion. Here we also have Bobby Allison written up there. So it's interesting that maybe the AMT uh, from 1995, whoever was in charge was able to get the Bobby Allison name license on there because the other decal sheet did not have it from 1999. Anyway, you can see all the different sponsors on here like Cam2 and Die Hard, as well as Summit and many others. So again, you can see the differences in each of the decal sheets. And that completes our look at the 1975 American Motors Matador NASCAR edition from AMT Ertl. Now, have you built this car before? Did you build the Bobby Allison version or the Mark Donahue version or a bit of both? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to see your pictures over on our Facebook account and I'll leave the description for that in the comment section down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great unboxing video of Mark Donahue's 1975 American Motors Matador by AMT Ertl. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building! <laughs>